Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? It's so easy with Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what we're doing right now by reading this ad. We struggled to find the right way to distribute our podcast, and Anchor made it quick, easy, and free. We're on platforms we had never heard of, and that's all thanks to Anchor doing the hard work. So if you have been thinking about starting your own podcast, head on over to anchor.fm slash start. That's anchor.fm slash start. I think that the word for this episode is poutine. Take a drink every time you hear poutine. Hello, everyone. (laughs) That sounded so fake. Hi! What's up, yo? <laughs> <laughs> so we're back from our very unexpected hiatus, and I'm so happy to be talking with you guys yes, again. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> we're back again. <laughs> We've been waiting all week to say that. Yeah, we have. Cue the Backstreet yes. Boys music that we can't play for copyright reasons. And if you're listening to today's episode, thank you so much for coming back to Spilling the Mad Tea, and for continuing to listen to us talk about some nonsense. So for today's episode, we're going to be keeping it simple, and we're just catching up with each other's lives and the things we've missed in Disney news over the past few months, which I feel like there's a lot, so let's get started. Yeah, there's been quite just a bit. Just a little bit. So Steph, what have you been up to the past two to three to four months, however long we've been gone? I know, right? <laughs> I was like, what? I couldn't remember the last time we recorded. But So we released a couple episodes in November. But that means we recorded them in October. So since then, I took a little vacation to Hawaii. And I was able to stay in Aulani over Halloween, which was magical. It was like everything I wanted it to be. Like, obviously Hawaii. Plus, like, a little Disney. Not too much Disney. I mean, I love Disney. But... You know, you want Hawaii when you're in Hawaii. And so it was perfect because you could, like, add as much Disney as you wanted. Like, you could go to a character breakfast. So or you could not. Compare it to the Polynesian as far as level of Disney goes. Um, I would say it's a little – I don't know if you see that much Disney walking around the Polynesian. You know, like, mm-hmm. at, like, Olani, like, you would see Chip and Dale, like, walking around the pool and, like, in the lazy river and, like – you don't really get that at the Polynesian, so I th- and but I think it's like a smaller area, but I would think like they were just they were like equally as beautiful. Joe Rody had a big hand in Aulani, so if you like Animal Kingdom, you know it's gonna be good. Yes, because he's from Hawaii, and so he like really wanted to do it honor and like do it right, and so you just like see these touches all throughout the resort, and it was lovely. Yeah, but, like, you could get, like, if you got, like, shave ice, you could add ears. You didn't have to, but you could. And then it was, like, in the shape of a Mickey Mouse. So, yeah, like, I wasn't looking for, like, Disney out of the experience. But it was there if you wanted it, which I thought was cool. One of the highlights of that stay was getting pumpkin Dole Whip. It was delicious. And it was magical. Definitely worth a trip out to Hawaii just for that pumpkin Dole Whip. Girl, I don't know (laughs) if I could pay $2,000 for some Dole Whip. It was so good. Sounds like so every good. basic white girl's <laughs> dream, but I'm so jealous that you got to have that. Yeah. I mean, I'm jealous. Don't get me wrong, but I ain't going to pay no $2,000 for no <laughs> ice cream. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. What else have I been up to? I made a banging fruit and cheese plate for Thanksgiving. It was beautiful. Okay. And definitely a highlight of, like, my 2019. Um, I went to see Frozen 2 more times than I would like to admit, but we'll get to that a little bit later oh, on in this episode. We're going to admit it. I was able to scratch off Portugal on my, like, scratch-off map. I had a Lisbon layover, so that was exciting. Also a highlight of what we've missed. And I took a quick trip to Walt Disney World in the beginning of January. I went with my mom and my sister and her kids, and it 
was really fun. My mom and I went to Galaxy's Edge and we rode the Skyway. Skyliner, Skyliner. We rode the Skyliner. So that was a first. That was exciting. My niece was now tall enough to go on like a bunch of roller coasters. So it was like a heavy thrill rides vacation. That shit makes which is me really feel exciting. so old. <laughs> I know. She was like, she was tall enough to go on Everest. Oh, wow. And I was like, she was like Space Mountain and like she just loved them. Like loved, loved, loved them. And it was, it was really, really fun. We, you know, we always stop by and see Pepe in Mexico for some margaritas. And we definitely did some damage there. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to my sister Brianna because that's just, it's tradition now and it was really fun. And I also really enjoyed the epcot fireworks with my nephew i don't remember the fireworks at all because me and my sister have been drinking around epcot all right the time we were watching them my nephew was like so into it i don't know what it was like some stranger stopped us and was like i've never seen someone enjoy fireworks <laughs> so much in my entire life i've never ha- like i don't think i watched the fireworks at all but it was like the best. It was the best nighttime spectacular we experienced. Well, I'm gonna need you to bring him when I finally go to see the new Epcot fireworks show, so that I don't completely hate it. Yeah, so it was a really special trip, very fun. And then tomorrow I am off on another trip. I'm, I've got to pack up for Japan. I'm gonna go see the snow monkeys, which has been on my bucket list for a few years now, and I'm not be stopping by tokyo disneyland that's what i've been up to katie how have you been i have i've been very busy um i'm really jealous that you're going to see the snow macaques i know i said i don't really have a bucket list but i'm gonna make one so that i can add that to it that and seeing all the disney parks there's my bucket list and you know going into all the club 33s Oh, that's a problem. Right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna buy my way, and I'm gonna have to we like. Make some, uh, yeah, I'm gonna make have to make friends, some friends. We, ain't gonna get <laughs> there. we need some connections. If anyone listening to this yeah. can get us into the cold thirty three, um, we'll give you a button. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you as many buttons as you want. Yeah. You can have like thirty two buttons, thirty three buttons. Why did I say thirty two? Did you just say thirty two? I buttons? said thirty two buttons. And not 33. <laughs> Because I am an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta make your own thirty third button. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm finally moved into my new home. Um, I say moved in loosely. We're still obviously gonna be in the unpacking process for oh, you know, the next year. Um, but we're kind of settled. I forgot how exhausting moving is. It's been years since we've had to really move, and I'm over it. <laughs> So it's been a lot. <laughs> um, but the holidays were a nice break from all of that. Um, I got, We got to enjoy uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas with our families. It was the first Christmas that Cameron and I had off together since we started dating. Aww. So that was fun. Um, and yeah. yeah. So I think Thanksgiving is, is the superior holiday to Christmas. What do I you agree. Think? Yeah. I just hate Christmas so much that yeah i will say that thanksgiving is better i just i just think christmas i is cannot overrated overblown no overdone. no you must be doing christmas no. wrong <laughs> so here's the thing we cannot everybody be has anymore. all these like expectations with it and you like everybody has to have presents yes. and there's just a lot of like anticipation of you like having to enjoy yourself. There's a lot of pressure. Whereas Thanksgiving, you literally just cook a bunch of shit, hang out with whoever. Like you don't have to see anybody you don't want to see on Thanksgiving. It's not like a big deal not to see somebody like it is on Christmas. So you just make a bunch of food, hang out with the people you like, and eat yourself into a coma. Like it's literally, if I could create my own holiday, that's what it would be. I agree with you, Katie. Mm-hmm. See, I, I don't, I don't see anybody. I don't. Know. I mean, I guess I don't either. Well, I guess I do. <laughs> but you do, right on. Like, do you? Hmm. Do they listen to this show? <laughs> um. Yeah. So that's basically been what I've been doing the last few months, and working and working. Rachel, how was your break? Everything was good with me. I loved Christmas. 
I'm trying to think what else happened before Christmas because I don't remember you saw much Stephanie? about that. Stephanie came to my house, but that was also for Christmas. <laughs> it was pretty Rachel much really loves Christmas. Christmas, so it makes sense that you would just block everything else <laughs> out. And that's like the only thing you can remember is Christmas. That's all it was. We did what did I do? I did Thanksgiving with Katie, so that was nice. And we like roasted s'mores. Or oh Marshall yeah, how can I forget about that? That's one of the reasons I enjoyed Thanksgiving so much more this year was that we like made a fire and just hung out instead of the whole like let's open presents and let's be let's do this and be family oriented because well and there was no people like hanging out waiting for like presents to be open so they could leave we were hanging out because we wanted to hang out with each other man fuck some presents (laughs) why are you talking about christmas i'm talking about thanksgiving (laughs) that's what i'm saying our thanksgiving was so good because we just got to hang out around the fire and enjoy each other's company that was the present Otherwise, yeah, Christmas, we did a really huge um, Christmas party with all of our friends. We had, like, a million people here. And (laughs) it was just really fun. Stephanie came, and she helped me a lot, and it was fantastic. I was there virtually for some of it. You were. So was Katie. That's true. Kelly was there for all the, like, day of prep. Yeah. That was (laughs) And Katie bought some Cheetos or something that day and ate those while she was on her Uh lunch break. I did. That was fun. That was fun to be on my lunch break and and spend time with you. (laughs) Um, Did I go anywhere? Oh, shit. I just went on a cruise. I just went to the Bahamas. (laughs) Wait, yeah. I want to hear all about the cruise. We really haven't talked about it at all. No. Cruise was really fun. Uh, We went to the Bahamas. So, of course, we drove, and we went out of Cape Canaveral, so it was close to Orlando. So, you know, there's that. And we got to, I got to see the Disney boat, which I was fascinated by, and I'm like, eh. I want to go on one one day, but it's very a lot of money. Yeah, you want to um, go on it, and then you look at the price, and you're like, you know what? No. I might. Also, one of these thinking days. about, like, all of the little childrens that are on the boat just seems very overwhelming. Mm. But they have them, they have them quarantined into their own children's (laughs) spaces very well. Quarantined! (laughs) You really, truly, you rarely see them until there's like characters around the boat. And then obviously there's going to be kids. But they have characters come out at like 11 o'clock and ain't no kids out at that point. So it's not as overrun with children as you would think it is. I picture it being like miserable. A crowded wave pool at nope. a water park in the summer. It's really not. <laughs> just, <laughs> just swarming with kids peeing right. in suits. So gross. That is how I picture a Disney cruise. So gross. But anyway, so yeah, so I, we we had fun. We went to the Bahamas. It was it was very short, but it was very nice. We had a really great cruise director. Um, if you ever get a chance, it was a carnival cruise, so I'm just going to just shout it out. If you ever get a chance to go on a cruise with the cruise director, Mark Q, please do it. This dude, he is so good. He is hilarious. Um, they did like a little like deck dance party like the last night or whatever. And of course, that was the highlight of my cruise because I just danced whatever it's fine but we like we went to the Bahamas we spent a whole day we went to the I, we just went to the beach really we didn't do anything the first night was really bad because the water was really bad every one of us got sick oh every god one of us, it was bad like pooping like, sick no 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 like, <laughs> Carrie almost oh like throwing up sick <laughs> and oh, oh yeah we were all queasy nauseous mm. headaches all of it it was so bad was it like it was like bad. seasickness or was it like from something yes oh, oh, yes okay, okay. yes you didn't because like it was very rough. No, no, gotcha. no. It was very rough waters. Like Ugh. the first dinner, like the night dinner, uh, Carrie had to get up from dinner and go back to the room. Gross. Like she could not. Yeah, see, even... that's that just puts me off of cruising. So, but the, on the way back, like, because the night that we were actually at the Bahamas, which was the second night, we stayed the night. Like we didn't move. Mm. And so that was nice. We had a, you know, fancy dinner, dressed up, took pictures, all, you know, the whole nine yards. We stayed the night there, and then the next day, like, the last night was, like, the best. We decided, um, Josh, Lauren, Tony, and I, we decided to not go to the dinner. We didn't dress up. We went to the buffet, ate food, and then we went to this 90s trivia party. Ooh. Y'all. Ooh. The best. The best, the best. Like, I, I don't know if you saw the picture. I'll add it to the Instagram post but um the cruise director mark you in the picture that i had 
that I'll probably show you guys. He had like this uh, really, really vibrant, colorful thing on and I was just like he was the epitome of it and he did this thing like it was like we really were going to do trivia but it definitely wasn't trivia because nobody won anything but we went through all the songs and he played like a little bit of a song and then he um, said don't say anything write the song name down so we did it okay we were really competitive we thought we was really going to do something here it didn't happen but then after it was over he went back and he played all the songs and he had on like outfits under this big huge jacket of each like That's song awesome. or oh artist gosh. or whatever That's fun. like he did like one of the songs was barbie girl and he had on this wig and he had tutu <laughs> on and then the backstreet boys he had a backstreet boy wig and it was just so That's funny fun. he was the best that's cute. But we had the best time, and then he got us out. Like, he was like, come out. It was in the lobby. So it was a very small space with a lot of fucking people. Everybody started dancing. He had us do the Macarena, and he had us do this, that, and the other. Like, all these 90s dances, and it was probably the best time of the whole the whole trip. It was so good. But then after it was over, we drove back to Orlando. We stayed at a hotel near Disney Springs for a night, and I just went shopping and bought some things and saw AJ and... Enjoyed my whole life uh, all over again. So it was really nice. That was probably the highlight of our break off of podcasting was that. So it was really nice. I'm so glad that you got to do a little Disney while you're mm-hmm. in the area. Mm-hmm. A little bit. It always feels so weird to be in Orlando and not be going to Disney. Yeah, that's why I was, I definitely was the reason as to why we drove, like, back that way and stayed the night, because <laughs> I just, like, <laughs> I couldn't stand it otherwise, but it was really nice. We spent the whole, yeah, we spent the whole day in Disney Springs and hung out and I ate uh, poutine there. Did you know you could get some poutine there? Because I did not. Listen, <laughs> poutine sounds like a dirty word. <laughs> <laughs> hey girl, let me get some poutine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yeah, so that was it and then I, you know, then went back to work and here we are. First week back and it's all good. But anyways, so, Kelly, tell us about your life. So, I was insanely busy with my business from like I only took one day off in the entire month of November and a lot of December damn Uh, I went through and like tallied up everything that I made in those two months because I was keeping a list I made 10 name tags 121 ornaments two nutcrackers damn yeah nine (laughs) Night God <laughs> damn hand lettered signs and like six other painting projects that didn't fall into any of those categories. I don't honestly know how I did that. <laughs> yeah, so like we didn't plan this break, but like if we hadn't taken one, we would have killed yeah. each other and then yeah. died. <laughs> yeah, there would have been no more <laughs> spilling the mad tea. No. <laughs> then it did. Yeah. It was definitely a needed break. And just a little shameless plug, if you want to see some of the stuff that I made over those two months, go to this Lindo company on Instagram and you can look at all of you my stuff. You better go. Yeah, she made I bought a sign from Kelly for Christmas and it went over very well. My mom loves it. Oh yeah, I forgot I made that. I, I forgot most of the stuff. Like I can't it was all a blur. <laughs> You were probably just on autopilot. Yeah. Probably a fourth of those ornaments were mine. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. My mother and my sister both gifted me some this and Doe art for Christmas. And it was like Kelly wraps her packages so beautifully. And they're very distinct. It's just like very minimalist, like brown paper wrapping and a gorgeous like string with her um wax seal on it and i walked into my mom's um living room before christmas and saw them and i was like Ooh, I know what those are. <laughs> yeah. and it was the What'd first thing i wanted to open i got one of the the embroidery things yeah i think jesse yes your embroidery that. um Yes, my sister ordered that for me, and then my mom got me one of the, one of your um, paintings that you did. I think you you had done it a while ago. It was ago. of the girl, right? The girl and with like the Sedona. Yes, it's like the silhouette of a girl with like, yeah, yes. Well, I'll post it on the um, Instagram for this episode. We're gonna plug you all up, Kelly. Girl, I'm gonna plug you up. You want some poutine? <laughs> yeah, so we also had a really big snowstorm over Thanksgiving. So we did like a Friendsgiving at my friend's house. 
with some of her family and it was a lot of fun like it was just like a chill out day drink and eat food which is again why thanksgiving is superior to christmas mm-hmm. oh, girl bye. it's debatable and then we got like <laughs> over two feet of snow so that was fun to just we didn't go anywhere we just hung around and played in the snow and that was really fun and then we did so we live in Arizona and all of our families in Alabama. So we drive to Alabama from Arizona because we take my dog with us and we have a lot of presents that we take. So we drove two days. We split it up into two days there and back. While we were in Alabama, I got to see Katie and Cameron. We went to the zoo that Katie works at and I got to meet all of her animals and it was fantastic and such a special day that like a bunch of my family went along and like my niece and nephew went and they just had like the best time that was one of the best days i've had in such a long time not only did i get to see you i get to like share this like new place and new thing in my life and it was really i was really impressed by the zoo like i I, like a lot of the zoos i go to like you see animals like pacing around like back and forth like they have no enrichment or like their enclosures are small like they don't have anything to interact with and like you can tell that Katie and all the other keepers really care for the animals there because, like, all the animals were engaged with something, and it was just really cool to see. Oh, thanks. And I got to meet my new nephew, which was really cool because I didn't think I was going to be able to do that, so I got to meet him. And then we drove back to Arizona, and I jumped right back into working because that's when I'm happiest is when I'm working. So doing that. Who had a baby? Uh... <laughs> 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 Christopher my brother and my sister-in-law <laughs> okay yeah. I'm like Amy did not have a baby <laughs> who did it they, they, <laughs> they had him back in July and I got to meet him what else is happening oh yeah my brother was in the hospital also that wasn't fun so I won't elaborate on that but back in Arizona I'm working we're getting back into hiking and I'm happy to be talking to you guys again and doing this shenanigans yeah Yay. This shenanigans is like the best. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, we're really glad to be back. Even if no one listens to this, this is such a good time <laughs> yeah. for us to get together and reconnect. It is. And if you're not li- if you're not listening, which you won't hear, <laughs> you're not. But <laughs> you probably should. Yeah. So if, if you are listening, listening you tell should. your friends. Yeah. <laughs> I think first and foremost, we make this for ourselves and the fact that other people listen to it and enjoy it is just like the cherry on top top that's the icing on the cake and the cherry in the middle Mm -hmm. it's both really cool and fucking weird yeah (laughs) well said well said so now that we are all caught up with each other and you guys are caught up with what's been going on with us let's catch up with what's been happening at disney i was like ketchup and mustard i was about to say let's catch up and mustard (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) but no no so now we've got the ketchup done let's move on to the mustard (laughs) (laughs) so disney news that's what we're gonna finish out this episode going through Mm -hmm. what's been happening with the disney I'd like to preface this, too, with we never pretended to be a Disney news podcast. So this <laughs> no, is just honey. your real yeah. basic. <laughs> like, like, were you busy during the holidays? You may have missed this stuff, too. Right. <laughs> You're getting, like, the tidbit of news and a lot of our opinions, which I feel like you should be used to by now if you've been listening to any of the episodes we've made before. Right. <laughs> and you true. clearly like our opinions because your ass is still listening. Yep. So. Here we go. And your ears are too. (laughs) (laughs) You're so dumb. So number the the first thing that I'm gonna say because it's probably the biggest thing that's happened since we stopped is um, Disney Plus is here and we've been enjoying it for about what two and a half fish months now. Yeah. And I quite love it. I have two words, baby. Yoda. No! No! <laughs> yes! yes. Uh, y'all. I haven't even watched The Mandalorian. I don't plan to. <laughs> you can you can sacrifice me if you want to. I will die on this cross. Baby Yoda is the best <laughs> character that they have come but out with in, in recent His name years. is not that. I was just about to say, I know somebody's going to say, it's not Baby Yoda, blah, blah, blah. 
It doesn't have a name <laughs> other than the child, so I'm going to keep calling it Baby Yoda. I completely, completely does, understand that that is not the Yoda. The writers know its real yeah. name. It has a name. I'm going to keep calling it Baby Yoda. Well, we just that is well, unbeknownst to us. When we find out its us. name, we'll call it Baby and Yoda. And his name is, name, he is a child. Mm -hmm. He ain't Baby Yoda. He probably ain't even got no relation to his ass That's right fine. now. That's oh. fine. He Baby Yoda. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. He Baby Yoda. Oh, I'm not going to call it the child. He like, look at the child. You sound like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm going to keep calling him Baby Yoda. Even though I know he's okay. not Yoda. Mm -hmm. It's okay. <laughs> okay. You guys all know that I am not a Star Wars fan haven't watched mandalorian i love baby yoda so much i'm in three different baby yoda facebook groups <laughs> <laughs> i am so disgusted oh, i can't believe i left this out of my catch-up in preparation for rise of skywalker i have watched every minute of star wars i'm so footage proud of you from episode one to nine all of the so television proud. shows. That's so attractive. Yeah. It was it was a very it was a very trying time. <laughs> it was a lot of Star Wars. But the Mandalorian was like yes. a bright light. It was so it good. It was like felt like new and it felt fresh, but it felt relevant. See, I very, feel like even if you're not a fan of Star Wars, like I feel like you don't really have to watch anything else, but like I think even non Star Wars fans would enjoy the Mandalorian because it's really different from other Star Warsy things to me. I did enjoy. Well, Josh watched it. He watched it all. I watched a few episodes with him. I am not a Star Wars guru as you two are, mm. <laughs> and I like it okay. I've watched some of the films, and I plan on going back and restarting them and watching them all again very soon because Josh agreed so nicely that he would do it with me. So I am not alone in this world. I enjoyed The Mandalorian when I saw of it. But I was very confused because I'm like, where did he come from? Who he is? Where he get this? Where did he get this child from? Like, why is he protecting him? Like it's this? all told like, in what? the show. To be fair, Kelly and I don't really yeah, know that like, either. Everything <laughs> so. that we know is told in the show. Like you, it doesn't. Yeah. Except for you're not. Yeah. Except for anything. the very last episode, there's like a small Easter egg in like the, the very last episode that you would probably need to know something beforehand, but. You don't need to watch other stuff. I feel like it's its own thing. All, all you really need to know is Bebe Yoda. Girl, bye. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> um, yeah, what else have you guys been watching on Disney Plus? I was about to say, I do have a question that I want to know previously. And I hope this was an episode that we actually released. I'm not real sure. What it was. <laughs> but um, we all said what we might watch when it comes out. What was your first thing? Did you stick to this or did you watch something else? Because me personally, I kept my word and I watched what I said. <laughs> I, watched, <laughs> I watched Eddie's Million Dollar Cook-Off. And yes, if you might ask, it was just as good as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I also stayed true to my word. I watched The Descendants. So now okay. I can, you know, have conversations okay, with my niece okay. and my sister. <laughs> I think I said The Mandalorian, and I'm pretty sure I did watch The Mandalorian first. I don't really exactly remember, but I'm pretty sure Mandalorian was the first thing we watched. Well, I'm the liar. Is anyone surprised? <laughs> oh I don't even remember what I said I was going to watch, but it definitely wasn't Frozen, and that was the first thing I oh, watched. Oh, yeah! Because Cameron's little sister came over and spent the night, and she was just like, I want to watch Frozen. And I was like, I don't think I have Frozen. And she was like, Disney Plus got Frozen. I was like, oh, shit, you're right. I haven't even opened the mm -hmm. app yet. And so I watched Frozen first thing. <laughs> nice. I'm a little disappointed, but a little bit like, you know what? That tracks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I ain't mad at it. I did. It was really nice last night. I was like, I want to watch like a movie to like get me in the mood for like Japan. And I like couldn't think of anything. And I was like, ah, Big Hero 6. <gasps> I was like, I know I have access to it now through Disney+. Plus. And that was just really nice knowing that like any Disney movie I ever want to watch is like, basically at my fingertips and i don't have to worry about like do i have to find some like sketchy website to stream this from like nah it's all above board like we're good i just watched that on <laughs> sunday awesome. i also enjoyed uh the imagineering story yes. was 
so I loved good. It. I've not been emotionally prepared to watch that yet, so I've not I, yet started. It. I cried like the like five times in the first episode. And I didn't cry, oh, but I, I was very intrigued. And pretty much any time Walt spoke, I was like, oh god. But like the uh, the rest of the episodes were just really good. I don't think I got too emotional for the rest of them, but the first one was just like they're so good. Steak and heart hurting, but it was it just. I was very, like, it just made me feel very warm and fuzzy yeah. every time he was on the screen. Yeah. I was just like, holy shit. Like, this is like, I wish I was living in that time because it was just amazing. And I'm not going to talk, I'm, you know, I ain't going to talk all about it because y'all need to watch yeah. it. It is, it's phenomenal. I know, I know. It's on the list. I just, yeah, I need to, I feel like I need to be like a most. You definitely have to be in a spot for it. And I was just like, that's just one of the things that I was most excited about. So I mm-hmm. went ahead and got it out of the way. Yeah. And I really, I appreciated that that, that they did that. I, I hope that they, are they moving forward with it or is that all? Do you know? I don't know. I haven't heard that they're like making more of them. I mean, they would need to like start making more for the parks because they went through just about everything. Which speaking of Stephanie, in the last episode they are introducing this technology that I think they're gonna be using in the Avengers campus. So I need you to watch it so I can talk to you about this because it was real cool. Was it the robot? Yeah the robot that looks like Spider Man. I'm like they're gonna have Spider Man swinging around in Avengers campus. So I'm gonna poop my pants. <laughs> but yeah, um but what other stuff have y'all watched? Movies? TV shows. What are you enjoying? I watched Lizzie McGuire. We're watching. Um, yes, girl. We're watching the series on the national parks. There's a National Geographic series on Disney Plus about the national parks. So that's what we're watching right now. Uh, I haven't watched much on Disney Plus. I've been in, I've been in a Star Wars vortex. Yeah. So well, that's, that's what you've watched. watched. That's yeah, fine. I watched. I watched Star Wars Rebels. We watched all that. That was really good. I really enjoyed that. That one. I enjoyed it more than Clone Wars. Which, I need to finish Clone Wars, actually. I haven't watched all of Clone Wars. Bad Star Wars fan here, but... I, I like uh, I like Clone Wars a lot. I'm really excited that it's coming back. I liked Rebels because you didn't really know the group of people. So, like, you didn't know what was going to happen to them. Like, with Anakin, you know what's going to happen to him, so... See, I think that's why I didn't care. Yeah. I was like, I don't know who these people are. No, I don't I really like care that. what happens to them. Same thing with, with, like, Resistance. I haven't watched Resistance. Like, we need to watch that. I mean, you know some of them. Yeah. It's all right. It's just like so far removed from like the Skywalker yeah. saga that it's just I mean Poe is in it, but yeah. Sorry guys. There's going to be a lot of Star Wars. There's been a lot of Star Wars stuff that's happened recently, so that's so much Star Wars. Stuff. Like I know that it's a different experience because you guys actually like it, but coming from somebody who's like doesn't care one way or the other, I'm just, I'm like seriously more fucking Star Wars shit. <laughs> it's never going to end. <laughs> It's, it's not. It's, it's never it's ending. Not. Yeah, they're getting that money out of that purchase. All right. Speaking of money, <laughs> Frozen Two is officially the highest grossing animated movie of all time. All time. Oh, Except yes, honey. For John Favreau's The Lion King, but Disney refuses to call that an animated feature, mm. which is stupid it is. because it's one hundred percent computer generated. It's fucking dumb. <laughs> right. So technically, if they would, like, accept it for what it is, that it's animated, that would be the highest grossing animated movie of all time. But because Disney's not calling it that, nobody else is calling it that. So then Frozen 2, congrats, I guess. I mean, I think it's impressive for, like, a sequel to do better than the original. So I think Yeah, that really is cool. impressive. So good for them. But yeah, I saw this movie the night it came out, and then I was sad that I didn't see it with my sister. So I went to see it again with my sister, and then I was with Rachel, and we were like, well, should we, we should obviously go see it together because it's beautiful. So I've seen it three times. I feel like I had low expectations, but it was great. I loved it. Obviously, I went three times. I, I, I went <laughs> twice. I went once with Josh and once with Stephanie, mm-hmm. and I cried both times. <laughs> And this is coming from me that don't give any shits about Frozen. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but it was, like, beautiful. Oh, God. It's so like, good. I sat, so the first time I saw it, I was, like, sitting next to some, like, guy who was, like, my age, like, in his 20s. And he was there, like, with his other guy friends. What? And the whole time, they were just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. Oh, my God. Do you see that? That is beautiful. And I was like. Damn, okay. Can I get your number? <laughs> hey, can I get all y'all's numbers? It, it is beautiful. 
Like, it is. It's stunning. And, like, I didn't really care for the storyline, to be honest. Like, the first time I was like, this seems kind of like a half-assed, like, Elsa got her powers. Like, let's come up with a reason how. But the second time, you, like, notice more. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, it's not as half-assed as I thought it was. I just wasn't noticing a lot of the stuff. And then you like it more the second time you see it, I think. Was that your experience, Rachel? So, first time, I I liked the songs. Songs were good. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. But then when I went to see it with you, I was like, "Mm, ooh, okay. I know this. I know this, too. (laughs) Look at those leaves. Okay. Damn. (laughs) Y'all, this movie is so good. (laughs) (laughs) Also, I would like to give, like, a little shout out to – they're obviously not listening and won't know that I'm shouting them out. But they – there's a podcast – um called inside frozen 2 that like disney put out and it's beautiful like they talk to like the writers and like the actors and like the composer like they talk to everyone involved in this process and it's so interesting so once you see it go listen to the podcast Mm -hmm. it was really really enlightening very cool kelly i know you didn't see frozen 2 but you did go to the movies at some point right my uh, December movie money went to Rise of Skywalker, and I'm going to need some time to talk about this. I'm going to mention some spoilers. If you don't want to hear spoilers, skip ahead five to six minutes. I, I might be concise enough to fit it all into that. Oh, this movie broke my heart, you guys. I left this movie destroyed. What ha- happened? I'm going to get... What, I'm what's like the big thing? Just, just spoil it for me. They killed him. He dies. Whoa! Oh shit, he dies? He turns into a good boy, and then he dies. Oh, uh, well, at least he was redeemed before he died, right? I mean, I don't know what he did, but at least he was redeemed. Of his character is, like, okay, so he, like, throws away his Kylo Ren lightsaber. Like, he talks to Han Solo and is like, Dad. And he, and then Han Solo is like, I know. Because, you know, like, when Leia's like, I love you, and Han Solo says, I know. Aww. And then, and then so he throws the lightsaber away. And then he's like a good boy. And then like the last 15 minutes, like the switch, the way that Adam Driver switched from being Kylo Ren to Ben Solo was the most adorable, fantastic thing I've seen in so long. And my heart is beating so this fast with me talking. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, so upset. So like in the end, he like he, him and Ray like reconcile and he saves Ray because she dies. And then. Wait, what? Oh, Ray dies too! In this movie? Yeah, I ain't about to watch 17,000 hours of all this Star Wars just for the badass female to, to die. No, I'm good. Ben heals Ray and brings her back to life. Then they kiss. It's the sweetest moment. And then he, he just. got them kind of powers. Oh, that was so He falls dumb. backwards and just disappears and dies. And I'm just like. Luke died for nothing because uh, because he wanted Ben to be redeemed. Leia died for nothing because she wanted her son to be redeemed. Like. Uh, I hated it. They all died so that, like, Ray could live That's on. bullshit. Sorry. Wait, so Ray no. don't die. Ben, ben brings her back and she lives <laughs> on. No, so, oh, like, like, yeah, he, like, gives his life force yeah. to her, basically. And, like. Death dumb. But they, like, kissed and that was stupid. But, listen, okay, I think this, like, I mean, Kelly obviously, like, like, loved and hated this movie. I hated most of it. Because they killed i heard that if you had watched it since forever and like grew up with it you fucking loved it otherwise you probably i think i think like it got like a pretty bad rap like people were not happy with like what happened but listen if you had to like come up with like a culminating film for like deck like to sum up like decades of a story and like I thought J.J. Abrams did a pretty good job, like, all things considered. Like, he wasn't going to please everyone. There was no way with, like, this many fans who were, like, cult fans. Mm -hmm. Like, you couldn't have made everybody happy. I thought, but he did. He did pretty good. I could have dealt with all, like, I, like, I, like, loved, like, this last trilogy, like, wasn't very, like, romance heavy. And I was like, yeah, like, romance doesn't need to be featured in, like, every movie. You can just have, like, friends fighting for friends and, like, but then the whole, like, oh, this one got very romantic and it was stupid. It was unnecessary. Gross. And I didn't like that. No strong female lead for the good guys would, like, be harboring this love for this evil person who, even if he... 
they've had a connection the entire time. I mean, I ain't never seen it, so I don't know why I'm talking about anything. They, I just <laughs> thought they were like friends, like a brotherly no. love. Like, you get me, I get there you. Is no, there is no brotherly love with Adam Driver. You cannot treat that fella as a brother. No. <laughs> you cannot look at him and say, yeah, I like you as a brother. No, that's not happening. Sorry. I mean, she <laughs> might can. She might not be in love with him. You look at is. that man and you say... Yeah, I want to be with you forever in a romantic way. <laughs> <laughs> you say you can get my poutine. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. My monorail. <laughs> if you saw a brotherly sisterly connection between them two, I'm just going to call bullshit on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kelly is yelling. <laughs> okay, but look, I do have something to say. I have input okay, on what a Star Wars say, topic. Josh was watching what is the film before? The that? Last Jedi. Yeah, he was watching that the other day, and it was at a part where they, like, oh, God, what what happened? Do they, they touch they hands? Something, do they touch hands? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. And they... And then when they yeah. fight, and Ray grabs his thigh to, like, get balance on, yeah, that's brotherly and sisterly. No. You don't... <laughs> Oh, that sounds yeah, sexual. Yeah, you don't brotherly <laughs> grab someone's thigh and fight and kill people back to back together and not... Yeah. Why not? Yeah, but I was watching it and sure I was you like, no, I was you like don't. what's going on? What's going on? Because I just like, I don't know. I've seen it and I was like, mm, they, mm, they yeah, like each There's other. something there. He is my favorite Star Wars character of all time. I know people Clearly. probably dis- disagree with this. <laughs> what? <laughs> and that's controversial. He didn't last very long. Yeah, he's my favorite and I love him and he's gone and I'm sad and... I'll stop talking about this because I could go on forever. Well, speaking of Star Wars, <laughs> you may have heard that a small ride called Rise of Resistance uh, has opened up. It opened up in Walt Disney World on December 5th and Disneyland on January 17th. So I went to Disney World on January 3rd. Yes, on the 3rd. Fully intending to, like, ride this ride. I was like, if nobody else wants to, like, wake up early in the morning with me, like, I'll just, I'll wake up and go by myself. So the way they've been doing it, they've been doing, like, virtual boarding groups. So you have to be, like, scanned into the park, into Hollywood Studios. And then you open up your My Disney Experience app. And then you ask to, like, join a boarding group. And basically you're competing with, like, all of the other people who have entered the park by park open that morning. Nuts. So you have to get there before the park technically opens to be in the gate by the minute the park opens and then just like hope that your phone has good service and like good signal to like get in this boarding group. And they just assign you a number and throughout the day they'll say, hey, it's time like your boarding group's up. Come on over to the ride. And like then you get to wait in line to ride the ride. So I was like, yeah, that's fine. Like I'll wake up at like five in the morning and I'll go do this one of my subsequent days but the day we I went to Hollywood Studios the first day with my mom and we went to Oga's Cantina and they like mix you with like another party if your party's not big enough to fill up the whole table so we were at this like standing table with two other families and one of the families we were with said that they got there at like five in the morning to like be in the park for to like get they got in a boarding group their boarding group was called and they were waiting in line and the ride went down this was at like maybe 11 a.m so they got like fast passes to come back later in the day but we were talking to them at like 6 p.m the ride still hadn't come back up oh no so even if you do everything right and, like, you're there, you get in a boarding group, like, there's still no guarantee you're going to get yeah. on the ride because it's been, right? like, breaking down. So it's having, like, so much downtime. So I was like, screw that. Like, I'm not going to wake up at 4 in the morning to go do that. Like, I love sleep. Like, I would <laughs> so much rather sleep in yeah. than do that. So I didn't get to do it. I fully intended to. But if I had, like, the day that these people had, I would have been pissed Mm -hmm. and Hollywood Studios was miserable because everyone was just like hanging out in the park like waiting for the ride to go back up so like there were lines oh my god the lines were terrible terrible 
it was like a miserable it was like the most miserable disney day i've ever had yeah i feel like it's hagrid's you know because like when hagrid's yeah. motorbike ride opened up it was just breakdown after breakdown after breakdown and i i think it's like the same situation with this yeah i was just gonna say we saw this with hagrid's and i think that with these rides be opening now it's like such a big with in like era of social media a big thing to like be one of the first people to ride it and these rides are brand new they're not used to running all yeah. day long every single day like it, it's just the capacity and you gotta expect this ride is gonna need some downtime yeah. and as much as that sucks mm-hmm. like i think everybody that i've heard who's actually been able to ride it was like this is the coolest ride i've ever been on so which I feel like that's said about every new ride that comes out, you know? So, mm-hmm. I mean, I do want to ride it because there's a Kylo. There's, I think there's, like, two Kylo Ren animatronics in it. So I, And it just sounds like a really cool experience. So All right. So we'll have to do a future episode on Rise of the Resistance when, you know, it's <laughs> operational and we can yeah. actually get on it. To be continued. Let's talk about something else new in the parks. The fourth and final Club 33 at Walt Disney World opened at Animal Kingdom, the Harambe House, January 1st. Uh, Wait, if this you is want the to last see... one? I did not know the other ones had opened. I didn't know any of these had opened. Yes. Yeah, there's, um, they have them in each park now. Do you know where they are? I know nothing about these. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh-huh, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so if you want to see some really cool pictures of the inside of it, we will post a link on our Facebook group to an awesome blog that had some really cool pictures of what you can see just from the outside but you can still see into some of the lounge areas um so shout out to blogmickey.com for their awesome article about this but the club 33 location which of course uh club 33 is the private club that walt disney started in disneyland has branched into disney worlds i don't i i can't don't know what the exact numbers of it, but membership reportedly cost into the tens of thousands of dollars up front and then annual dues yeah. of almost as much as that as well. So I'll never be in Club 33. <laughs> Even if I had the money, I, I don't think I'd Disney spend it on that. As much bad. as I love Disney. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> that vacation club's looking real good by now. <laughs> <laughs> Each Walt Disney World Park does have a Club 33 location. In Magic Kingdom, there's one in Adventureland. and Epcot, it's at the American Adventure. And it's above the Brown Derby in Hollywood Studios. And now Africa in Animal Kingdom has Harambe House. Uh, so the next time you're there and you're passing in that walkway in between um, when you're kind of going towards Pandora and you've got Vessel and Lion King and those bathrooms over there. Um, if you're anything like us, you know exactly where the bathrooms are. You'll walk right by that new location, and um, according to this blog, it's pretty easy to see inside, and it looks like there's two sections, a nice lounge area, and then a bar. So that's really exciting that there's now one in each park. So also this past week, January 17th, the Festival of the Arts started in Epcot. I've never been to this, but I mean, it's the Festival of the Arts. It sounds like a place that would be right up my alley, so... Hopefully, I'll be able to visit one one time. I think that this is the best festival that is Epcot. That is at Epcot. I will fight food and wine fans all day long. It, it's amazing. Food and wine has become so overwhelming. It, the park is packed. And to be honest, like I just don't feel like I'm getting enough variety year to year with food and wine. Like it's it, it's staying very similar and. I've just been a little disappointed in food and wine the last couple times, but this festival is amazing. It's like a scaled down food and wine. It's still got the booths. It's, you can still taste different things and it's awesome. And it's got so many more like interactive experiences versus just like food. Yeah. the fe- This festival like celebrates lots of different types of art. So it celebrates what do you call it like physical art like paintings and sculpture and jewelry design but it also celebrates culinary arts and performing arts and so there's just so much to do like you get to walk around world showcase and see and and talk to different artists you get to eat different food that like these chefs are really proud and excited to be presenting because they're showcasing like the best that they can do in really colorful and beautiful ways. They have Broadway performers performing at um, 
in the American Pavilion and like showcasing their performing art skills and the park isn't as crowded as it is for food and wine like people aren't I don't think they're making like planning their trip around this festival yet so it's like you've kind of got the place to yourself and can really enjoy it and it's lovely it's 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 uh it's amazing yeah so I speaking of planning a trip around it that's exactly what I did this year I have kind of by happenstance gone to this festival the last couple years just because I like to go around that time of year but now I specifically planned a trip to make sure that I could go to Festival of the Arts it, because it is it's it's less crowded it's cooler weather you're not like hot and sticky and gross and miserable so I can eat more and not feel disgusting as quickly and there's just so much to see and do if you're one of those people who enjoys Epcot for just walking around World Showcase and you could totally do without attractions like this is the festival for you because it's not you're not weaving through a disgusting crowd of people to stand in line for food all day like there's so much to do other than attractions or waiting and waiting and waiting in different lines yeah very cool I can't wait to hear about your trip there's a lot of artists that I follow on Instagram that um they go down there and do signings for their art that they have that they like sell in like the Wonderground gallery and like different places throughout the parks but they're like actually there so one year I would really like to go and be able to I don't know if I'd want to like meet them because I don't really know how to meet artists like I don't I don't know like I like your art I don't know how to do that but it would be cool just to go see their stuff and like I mean there's like other like there's like thousands of people doing that yeah. all day so I think it would mm-hmm. be it's like totally normal it's not like you like running into them on the sidewalk and be like oh, I like yeah I, I'd be like I'm an artist <laughs> too and but I would just feel so stupid saying yeah that, so like I don't know oh well I say it to them Every artist that I meet at at um, Festival of the Arts, I'm like, my best friend is an artist, and like, I just love this stuff. Like, I just go on and on about how like, yeah, my friend's <laughs> an artist too, <laughs> and like, like they're kind of. I mean, you're an artist, you know. Art people are kind of like a little bit um, awkward, a little bit. We work um, alone most of the time. We don't. We don't really exactly. Know. I mean, it's yeah. not an insult. It's, I mean, you know, that's how they are. And these people are no different. So they're, they're very like, oh, yeah, yeah cool, thanks. And like, or, you know, I mean, you know, Cameron will walk up and talk to a brick wall. So he'll walk Cameron up and be like, and what's your favorite say muffin? Totally off the wall. <laughs> yeah, seriously? No, he really will. He'll walk up and say these things, these people. Or he'll be like, what were you thinking when you painted this? <laughs> or like, why does this, this character look like a mushroom in this picture? Like, and they'll just, like have such a good conversation about that and you can see how passionate these people are about their art and they actually get to talk about it and share with people. So also the day that the Festival of the Arts opened, they showcased like three new videos in uh, Epcot as well. So there is a new Canada Circle Vision show. It is called Canada Far and Wide. It unfortunately replaced Oh Canada, which I oh so loved. Oh, I just so okay. I haven't seen this in person, but I watched it on YouTube. It's host by Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara, which you may know from whom you may know from Schitt's Creek, which I'm obsessed oh, with. Yeah. So I was like, okay. I mean, I love Martin Short and I loved Oh Canada, but I like you two too. So okay. So this one is beautiful. Like the footage that they put in this is really lovely, but it's not funny. Yeah, it's really I, was, I watched it and I was like, "Oh, these people are funny in everything else that I've seen them in, but they're not being funny in this. Like not even a little bit. They are like it's like a history yeah. lesson. It was so boring. I mean, it's beautiful. Like the it's like soaring over Canada. And like, <laughs> They did, like, a feature on, like, the indigenous people, which I thought was really cool because that was missing from the last one. But it's boring as hell. Like, I don't think I'm going to be going out of my way to go see this. I'm going to be real honest. I think they should just put a log flume ride there and be done with it. (laughs) You're a lumberjack. All right. And you get poutine along the way. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You you swim through a river of gravy. (laughs) I think the the word for this episode is poutine. (laughs) Take a drink every time you hear poutine. So another new film that's in the Land Pavilion that took place of where the Circle of Life thing was is a new film called 
awesome planet. It's narrated by Ty Burrell, who played Phil Dumphy on Modern Family. So there's a new celebrity for you in the parks. It was okay. It's narrated as if Ty Burrell is a realtor trying to sell you the planet Earth. Like, he's like, it's a roomy place and there's all these features and blah, blah, blah. And then it switches <laughs> to talking about climate change and... I don't know. It, it's about 11, 11 minutes long. So they just like crammed a bunch of stuff into this like these like this like 11 minute long video. Um, it finishes on a hopeful note, which is it, it's like empowering you to go and do your part to, to help fight climate change and, and do better things for the planet, which I guess that's good. But it, I, it, I feel like it's it's got different tones like it starts out kind of silly and then he's like the planet yes. is dying and then it's like go fight for the planet <laughs> and i'm just like what are y'all trying to do here and then he's like but you can make changes go make changes but they don't tell you any of the changes you can make they're they're just like go look at this website for more information and you're like no you should put the information in this no one's gonna go to yeah. a website like recycle eat less meat like none of that is included a much more effective video would have been Ty Burrell being funny, like goofy, silly, but also like showing you different things that you can practically do to fight climate change, not just go do it. When, when it comes to stuff like that, people need to be shown <laughs> what they can do to change, not be told to go look at a website and just hope that they might do that because they're not. I also really feel like we need to have a moment in sil moment of silence for... Oh, was it Circle of Life? Because it was the one place in a Disney park that they went, damn! Mm -hmm. <laughs> with it. Mm -hmm. And that will always be. So good. Like, rest in peace. That yeah, was a beautiful So moment. good. <laughs> so much fun when the theater was actually kind of full and that happened and all the kids just lost <laughs> their minds. There's also now a Beauty and the Beast sing-along in the France Pavilion. I don't know how I feel about that. No. They show, like, part, like, I think it's, like, an 11 minutes again. All of these films are 11 minutes, so they definitely, like, cut down video time, which makes sense. They want to, like, get people in and out faster. So you can be like, check, I got another attraction. It feels like you did more in your day. Whatever. So they, like, pick, like, the few main songs, but, and it's, an it's narrated by Angela Lansbury, which is lovely that she, like, came back and did this thing. But she's like, well, this is a spin on the story that you may have known before. This is about how LeFou was really pulling the strings, matchmaking Belle and Beast. Um, no. <laughs> and so there's, like, little, like, new animated content of, like, LeFou, like, being a matchmaker between all no of these thanks. songs. I mean, I don't know. If we're following the, the new storyline that LeFou is gay and wanted to be with Gaston, that kind of tracks. <laughs> but, like, I did not need this in my life. I don't know who was like, you know what this park needs? Like a whole new storyline about LeFou. It was just, it was so weird. And like, I don't think that Impressions of France was like pulling in a lot of people. But I don't, like this just seems weird. Oh, one of the highlights of my Disney trip was in the Odyssey Pavilion. There was a room dead, oh, what was it called? I don't know. There's a room where they have like the display from D23 talking about like the future of Epcot. And it's like this new like seamless 360 and it's beautiful. This was like the coolest thing we did in Epcot that day. It was stunning. For all of you humans that like to buy things, spend a lot of money like me. They are doing a uh, Minnie Mouse, the main attraction merchandise monthly collectible thing like they did uh last year with the what is yeah, the, the wisdom, wisdom and then they had a mini mouse i mean a mickey mouse one the year before so like the past two years they've been doing this okay. monthly thing so they've been doing it a while but yeah so they um it's gonna release actually it already released on january the 18th for the first one it's space mountain stuff so they're releasing it looks like a pin set a plush a backpack some Minnie Mouse ears, and, like, a coffee mug. And I'm assuming they're going to do that for all of them. Um, and so it looks, it looks super cute. I almost spent so much money. <laughs> Pin sets look so cute. 
Like it's three pins and it's one with Mickey Mouse. I'm excuse me, Minnie Mouse, and then one that shows what the attraction is. Yeah, I'm excited for like individual like ride themed merch. Like what, my favorite thing about Disney is the parks, and like, right. So I love that they're making a whole line of like attraction merchandise like I, i'm i'm not so gonna buy excited. any of it because if i buy one piece then i'm gonna have to get it every single month so i'm just gonna admire yeah but October. i know october's haunted mansion and march is the mad yeah. tea party so you know we might have to do some march shopping yeah let's be honest we're all buying merch in march merch in march <laughs> So, to wrap up the end of this episode, I've got some bathroom news for you guys. Bathroom news! Where those really dumb bathrooms were next to the refreshment port in Epcot, the ones that were useless and had, like, two stalls, there's new bathrooms there. And they are bigger. Yay! Someone at Disney listened to our podcast and was like, oh, you're right, those are the worst bathrooms on property. Yeah, feel free to go back and take a listen to our Thrones of the Kingdom episode where we talk all about bathrooms. They've added a mid-queue restroom at Flights of, Flight of Passage. So that is if very you got a tinkle smart. when you're in line, you can go take a tinkle. We hope that you guys enjoyed ketchup and mustarding up with us because we really missed doing this if you still care about us and still want to listen to us we thank you so much and if you want to send us a strongly worded email about how you can't believe we were gone for so long and that you're just so upset that we've been gone uh you can email us we'll take it email us at spilling the mad tea at gmail.com follow us on instagram at spilling the mad tea tweet us at spilling mad tea y'all i ain't checked that twitter in so long (laughs) (laughs) But tweet us if you care to. And also like us on Facebook at Spilling the Mad Tea. And join our Facebook group that has been fairly active, even while we've been gone, at um, it's Spilling the Mad Tea Podcast. And if you're still listening, we'd also love if you would go and rate and review our podcast on whatever streaming device you're using to listen. Yeah, do all the things. All the all the good stuff. Bye, guys. Bye. Later. Bye. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do.